In this video, we propose to test your knowledge of profilometry and profile parameters in 10 questions. You will have 10 seconds to think about the right answer. Some questions will allow multiple answers. After the 10 seconds, the answer will be given and explanations will be provided. If you fail to answer correctly to some questions, do not hesitate to visit our Surface Metrology Guide to find more resources about the subject. So, are you ready to start? Question number one. Which of the following parameters can be used to compare the peak to valley amplitude of two roughness profiles? Answer A, RA. Answer B, RP. Answer C, RZ. Answer D, RDQ. One correct answer only. The correct answer is C, RZ. The RZ parameter evaluates the peak to valley height within a sample length. RA is an average of all points so it cannot assess the peak to valley height. RP characterizes only peaks above the mean line but tells nothing on valley depths. RDQ characterizes slopes so it is not related to height. Question number 2. Which of the following profile parameters is defined by this equation? Answer A, RA. Answer B, RQ. Answer C, RSK. Answer D, SQ. One correct answer only. The correct answer is B, RQ. That was pretty simple. RQ is also called the root mean square height and it corresponds to the standard deviation of the height distribution. RA is the mean of the absolute value of deviations. RSK is the skewness parameter and is the normalized third moment. SQ is the equivalent of RQ but on a surface. Question number 3. Which of the following parameters is best suited for controlling the sealing efficiency of a gasket? Answer O, RQ. Answer B, PZ. Answer C, WT. Answer D, RSM. One correct answer only. The correct answer is C, WT. The most efficient of these parameters, for sealing applications, is WT, calculated on the waviness profile. Using a waviness parameter has the advantage of removing local roughness, scratches and of focusing on form deviation and long wavelengths that may affect contact. RQ is a roughness parameter averaging height differences from the waviness reference profile. It does not take into account variations of form, and cannot be used in sealing applications. PZ is calculated on the primary profile which contains the waviness profile. However, it may be affected by local scratches and peaks that would mask potential form deviations. RSM is a spacing parameter measuring the mean width of profile elements on the roughness profile, along the x-axis. It does not tell anything about the z-axis. Question number 4. Which of the following height distributions corresponds to a negative skewness? Answer A. The distribution shown on the left. Answer B. The distribution shown on the right. Answer C. None of them. One correct answer only. The correct answer is B, the distribution shown on the right. The RSK parameter assesses the skewness of the profile, which is the asymmetry of the height distribution. This parameter is important as it gives information on the morphology of the surface texture. Positive skewness correspond to high peaks spread on a regular surface. Distribution is skewed towards bottom. Negative skewness is found on surfaces with pores and scratches. Distribution is skewed towards top. It is therefore an interesting parameter when contact or lubrication functions are required. However, this parameter does not give any information on the absolute height of the profile, contrary to RA. Question number 5. Which of the following parameters are directly related to RQ? Answer A, RZ. 
Answer B, RSK. Answer C, RKU. Answer D, RPK. Multiple answers are allowed. Question number 5. The correct answers are B, RSK, and C, RKU. They are the third and fourth moments of the distribution, normalized by RQ. RZ is just the peak to valley height within a sampling length. And RPK is calculated from the Abbott curve with a graphical construction described in ISO 13565-2. Question number 6. Which of the following parameters can be used to control lubrication efficiency? Answer A, RV. Answer B, RVK. Answer C, RDC. Answer D, RPK. Multiple answers are allowed. The correct answers are B, RVK, and C, RDC. RVK is typically the recommended parameter for studying lubrication. It can be seen as an oil retention volume parameter, although it does not calculate a volume. RDC can also be used for lubrication if its attributes are configured correctly, for example with RDC between 80% and 95%, so it focuses on the bottom part of the profile. RV measures the height of valleys but takes into account only one point per sampling length, which may be a scratch. So it is not reliable for lubrication. RPK focuses on peaks, not valleys, so it is meaningless for lubrication. Question number 7. Which of the following filtration conditions are best suited for the calibration of the lateral amplification on a stylus profilometer? Answer A. Roughness filter, lambda C equals 0.8 mm. Answer B. Roughness filter, lambda C equals 0.25 mm. Answer C. Roughness filter, lambda C equals 2.5 mm. Answer D. Waviness filter, lambda C equals 0.8 mm. Multiple answers are allowed. The correct answers are a. Lambda C equals 0.8 mm, and c. Lambda C equals 2.5 mm, both with a roughness filter. Using a periodic calibration specimen with a known period makes it possible to calibrate the x-axis of a profilometer using a spacing parameter such as RSM. A roughness filter with a cutoff equal or larger to 0.8 mm will ensure that the waviness is removed and the periodical pattern not affected by the filter. Therefore all periods will be correctly aligned and a spacing parameter will provide an accurate value. With a shorter cutoff, the periodic features will start to be affected by the filter and the period may be altered. A waviness filter will only retain the large modulation with a period of around 10 mm and will remove almost totally the periodical pattern of interest, so the calibration cannot be done. Question number 8. Which of the following statements are true? Answer A. The Gaussian filter is the only standard filter. Answer B. Some parameters do not need a lambda C filter. Answer C. By default, the Gaussian filter shall be used with ISO 4287 parameters. Answer D. The Gaussian filter is best suited for structured and stratified surfaces. Multiple answers are allowed. The correct answers are B and C. Some parameters, such as the P parameters calculated on the primary profile, do not need a lambda C filter, but only a lambda S filter. The Gaussian filter is the default filter for parameters of ISO 4287. But it is not the only filter. You may want to specify the robust Gaussian filter or the spline filter, for example. In this case it has to be written explicitly on the drawing. Structured and stratified surfaces do not work well with the Gaussian filter. This is why it is better to use a robust filter or the double Gaussian filter in this case. 
Question number 9. Which of the following statements are true? Answer A. RA is the most frequently used parameter in the world. Answer B. RA is the most useful parameter. Answer C. Specifying RA in an upper tolerance is enough. Answer D. There is no need to specify both RQ and RA. Multiple answers are allowed. The correct answers are A and D. All studies show that RA is the most frequent parameter mentioned on drawings. It is also the first parameter that have been used in the history. It was once called CLA, center line average, but it does not mean that it is the most useful or the most efficient, far from that. Indeed, in most cases, it barely correlates with the surface function, unless very specific filtration conditions are applied. Unfortunately, RA is usually the only parameter that designers know, and it is the only one taught to students. When specifying RA or another roughness parameter, it is important to document the filtration condition cutoff and filter type if not Gaussian. Otherwise, the tolerance is meaningless. The two parameters, RA and RQ, are totally correlated to each other. You can use one or the other, but there is no need to use them both. RQ has the advantage to have a physical meaning, and should be preferred against RA. Question number 10. What is the purpose of ISO 5436? Answer A. To explain how to calculate uncertainty budget of a profilometer. Answer B. To describe material measures and a file format for soft gauges. Answer C. To define how to evaluate the step height of a rectangular groove. Answer D. To define how to verify the stylus radius using a razor blade. Multiple answers are possible. The correct answers are B, C and D. ISO 5436 is a standard that describes, in its first part, material measured to be used for the calibration of stylus profilometers. It includes material measures with steps or various types of grooves. It also describes how to evaluate the shape of the stylus tip using a razor blade. The second part of this standard defines soft gauges which are files or reference programs used to validate software algorithms. But the standard does not deal with uncertainties. Thanks for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed this quiz. If you did not answer correctly to these questions, you may want to learn more about surface metrology by visiting our surface metrology guide. It offers many useful resources. You may also visit www.digitalsurf.com, the home of the mountain software.